We've all seen the devastation that storm surge can cause along our coastal communities. It's hard to predict, but can science actually help us understand it and build back better and stronger? ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska is taking us to the beaches tonight for a brand new perspective. We're here in Midnight Pass that was opened by this exceptional storm surge from Hurricane Milton. This hasn't happened in more than 100 years. And now scientists at USF are studying this pass, trying to figure out exactly how these barrier islands can be built for the future of some of these most powerful storms. Barrier islands are the first line of defense against a surge and the last place you want to be during a storm. Coastal mansions pounded by waves here on Siesta Key were no match for Hurricane Milton. Ripped to shreds, they are now one with the ocean. If this massive concrete home was so badly damaged, how can we build any others strong enough? This is a super powerful storm surge. That this did is, this. yes, yes, super powerful storm surge. Thank you. Okay. To find out, we hit the beaches with USF professor Ping Wong and his graduate students studying the science of the surge. The research is uh, we, we want to learn as much as we can so that we can uh, more effectively work with nature than try to conquer it. Uh, uh, that we did that uh, in the past uh, several decades. For the last three years, we have some really close misses. So how do we understand the system? How do we manage our risk? This storm basically wiped out all our dunes, almost 100%. His team walked the shorelines, seawalls. The grass get washed onto the boat lift. So that's very high. In back bays like detectives taking measurements. Observation stored. Got it. And searching for what they call the wreck line. The seawall is 5.5 uh, uh, feet high and the surge went up to 7.5. And this uh, line that washed up here is 9.2 feet. Using tools with fancy names. This is an RTK GPS, so a real-time kinematic GPS. So we're getting the elevation and then we can compare it to data that we have before the storm so we can see how much loss. We're really sitting amid rubble, but there are people's personal items scattered around us. It's hard to not be disheartened by it and be like, okay. But it also pushes us and gives us an opportunity to be like, okay, we cannot as a community feel this way ever again. So let's go back to square one and design our buildings, design our roads to assume for these situations to occur. Libby Royer is a PhD student in the Coastal Research Lab at USF. I feel like when something like this happens, you don't even know where to start. We first interviewed Royer near Johns Pass after Hurricane Helene. Following Milton, we met back up with them on Siesta Key at the newly opened Midnight Pass. Lada <laughs> Navalvos battled strong currents to collect data while Sidney Scott documented it all. So it's a meter per second. Don't lift it, Laura. Don't lift it. It's an accurate flow measurement. They just took a measurement here at Midnight Pass and they said that the flow, as you can see, is so strong that they think it'll just stay open on its own naturally. It won't close up again. A few months ago, Midnight Pass was just a regular beach. Now it links Little Sarasota Bay with the Gulf of Mexico, a hot spot for boaters able to go between Siesta and Casey Key for the first time in more than 40 years. This is what it looked like before the storms. Hurricane Helene opened a small channel. People tried digging sand out to keep it open. Milton finishing their work to the delight of locals. Let it flow, baby, let it flow. 1,000% nature, mother nature wanted this open. I just paddleboard and swam through midnight passing. I've been here 10 years, it's the first time I've done it, so it's pretty amazing. I saw so much more wildlife than I had before. It's so much cleaner, I could see the bottom. It's just, it's really exciting because like, all this water getting dragged out, all the fresh water coming back in. The measurements the team took show Midnight Pass is now 130 feet wide and in one spot about 16 feet deep. The record-breaking storms now rewriting our coastal history. 
and the codes on how we rebuild. I think it provides us an opportunity to really see where our infrastructure is lacking and start designing with nature instead of sort of opposing forces. We want to learn as much as we can so that we can uh, more effectively work with nature than try to conquer it. In Siesta Key with photojournalist Reed Bowler, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.